welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath, this is the Fish Slayer, and it's time to get into the bite. Wahoo in the boat, baby! That's a solid kingfish right there. Yeah, nice dolphin. There we go, that's dolphin trolling for you. Let's do this. Double header! Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Folks, here we are, another beautiful day in the Florida Keys. On the agenda today is we're gonna take you offshore and show you how to troll a diving minnow. Our intentions are to take you out to the patch reefs, do some shallow water trolling, show you what it takes to get into the bite using this ultra effective lure. And hopefully with any luck, we'll be bringing home some food to the family. Before we get into this though, if you wanna learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. On the boat with me today, I got my oldest four children. The one, the only, the fish slayer, Avi. All right, so like I said, it's a beautiful morning. We're rigging up. We're heading towards North Sound Creek. Gonna boogie on out to the fishing grounds, see if we can get our fishing one on. You know what that means. We'll see you out on the water. All right, folks, so like I said, we've headed out to the patch reefs. We're gonna do a little bit of trolling along the deeper outer edge of it where the reef meets the sand. Currently in right around 20 feet of water. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna find the ledges of the coral and troll around it. So what I said we were gonna do today is we we're gonna come out and we're gonna show you how to troll a diving minnow. This is a Yozuri six inch shallow water diving minnow. It'll only dive down to about three to five feet at most no matter how fast you pull it. Now we've got this rigged up on about 12 inches of wire leader because we are trolling the reef and there's toothy critters everywhere. Now I've also modified it to have inline hooks. Typically when you purchase a diving minnow, it comes with treble hooks. I don't like to troll with treble hooks. They can lead to trouble, especially if you got a fish flopping around in the deck. I don't want to get pegged by it. So diving minnow, about 12, 14 inches of number four, 40 pound test wire leader. Our setup is this small Penn International 12H reel spooled with 20 pound monofilament. It's on a seven foot star rod from the handcrafted series. All this gear is 15 to 30 pound class. Now, might be a little heavy for what we're doing, but sometimes trolling these uh, lures, you get into fights with, you know, good sized fish you know we got barracudas out here we got zero mackerels good sized yellow jacks a variety of snappers and you know you might land into one of those grouper and you want to be able to yank them out of the rocks if you get into that hookup all right so what we're going to do is we're going to keep this simple fire up the boat and we're going to get right into this, start pulling this line see if we can uh, find us a nice ledge to go along and uh get into the bite Five, maybe 100 feet of line and you're going to want to go right around four or five knots all right we're up and trolling we're going to find us some ledge of the coral follow along it rather simple remember we've got a diving lure so we're going to watch how our depth I got a question about these lures sometimes. Do you have to tune them, mind troll to the side? No, you shouldn't have to do any of that. Yep, I know, I see birds up here hitting the water. So we're gonna go troll right by them, see if we can uh, get into the bite. Oh, and we're up. Here we go, Abby. Let's go, big guy. It was that quick. big guy and we're on all right immediately just like that got the big guy on the fish 
Like I said, trolling them patch reefs right along that reef line where reef meets the sand. It don't take long. Get you in there bite. Have a little bit of fun. And you now hopefully bring home some dinner. All right. Got the big guy. He's getting his fish over the sand, which is good. You get that hook up over the sand, and then he's got nowhere to run. Because these fish are inherently going to run towards the rocks once you hook them up. All right. And I see the barracudas swimming all around. Rang the dinner bell, which is nice. <laughs> second fish of the day you having fun big guy hey yes. you having fun yeah yeah <laughs> all right what are we catching right now barracudas the yellowtail oh you want to see if we got something else he thinks we got a yellowtail snapper let's see if we do you got to get it up quicker if you got a yellowtail you better get them up quick that way you know the barracudas don't get them because they're vicious right now nice fish like i said you know just general basic easy going one rod one lure nothing much to it getting out having some fun this is a way to come down to the florida keys and get into the bite immediately all right big guy i want you to back up a little bit so we can get the fish in the boat all right bring the tip of your rod over here and he's looking like another barracuda there you go oh you're going to the bottom back i need you to back up big guy so i can get the fish on the boat Back up a little bit, there you go. All right, reel, you got a reel. Woo, barracuda number two, all right. So this is why I don't like using those treble hooks. You know, you got barracuda with teeth and treble hooks, recipe for disaster. All right, we're gonna let him go and get back up to it. So I wanna explain something as I'm letting the line out. If your lure, looks like it is skirting off to the side and being pulled way off to the side. You more than likely have one of your hooks, your middle hook, the hook that's in the belly of the lure, that is more than likely hooked onto your line. It's called being caught up under. You need to reel it in and uh, get that line unhooked and set it back out so that it'll troll straight. 
that comes to the thing where I was getting asked, hey, do I need to tune this lure? It's acting funny. No, you don't. You're more than likely just caught up under. You reel it in and you reset it. Another reason I use those inline hooks instead of the treble hooks that they come with. Again, letting out distance is not an exact science. The more you do it, the more in tune you'll become with it. And it won't be so much of a guessing game. Yeah, and if you look over here, you got the coral over here. That's the darker stuff. And then it leads over to the more aqua green stuff. That's the sand. Right? So we got a very easy, identifiable place to fish down here in the Florida Keys. Let me take you to Google Maps real quick and show you what it looks like on a map so you can see. So the patch reefs are located about four miles offshore, five miles offshore. They're about a mile and a half to two miles east of what is known as Hawks Channel. You can identify Hawks Channel on Google Earth very easily, and then you head over. Now, we're right around 20 feet, which is the outer edge of the patch reefs. If you get into the 30 foot depth or so reef, you are actually on the reef. You've gone from the patch reefs to the actual reef. That's not technically what you're looking for shore is within sight this harbors many different types of species and provides for a fun you know family day full of exciting fishing the best time of year if you're going to come down and you can get a good clean day to fish on it is most definitely you know the fall and winter months that's when the bite is the hottest and a weird phenomenon occurs of course on the patch reefs is that as the sun gets further up during the day the more desirable predatory fish like mackerel and yellow jacks and all that good stuff tend to come out and get into the bite. It's almost counterintuitive what you would think, oh, the sun's coming out, the fish are gonna bite less. No, they tend to hit more as the sun comes up. The barracudas tend to go away. They've gotten their early morning fill of the bait run that flows over and heads out and disperses over the reef. And so as you're traveling along, you're gonna run over these points that are coral heads. You know, you don't want to try and bop and weave around every single one of them. You want to roll, roll over them because right on the other side of them is where the fish are waiting to ambush. Get it in that hookup, get it in a bite. Remember, we're, we're going after predators. That's how they think. Opportunity. Oh. That didn't take long, just a couple of minutes. Big guy on a fish. You having fun? Yes. All right. And see what we got. You know, you never know. Here come the barracudas. Look at them all. Right down there, there's like four or five of them. They're swimming around. Like I said, early in the morning, though, it tends to be lots of barracudas. All right, here we go. Here comes our fish. I need you to walk backwards, big guy. Yeah, it's going to be barracuda. All right. Okay. Walk back a little bit. Reel up. Reel up, big guy. Reel. Alright, third barracuda of the day. Get the hook out. There we go. Nice fish. Alright, I don't know if you can see it real well, but we've caught those three barracuda and look at how pegged up this lure is getting from those razor sharp teeth. Actually, the bill has been snapped off. So seeing that the bill has been snapped off of the lure already, we're going to uh, we're going to switch up lures, switch up hooks, and plop in another one, and uh, see if we can continue getting into the bite. Okay, so we have re-rigged to a sort of more brown, same six-inch Yozuri shallow diving minnow. We're gonna head back out to the uh, same little ledge we were trolling on, plop this lure back in the water, try and find us some more bites. Having a good old fun time whooping butt on some barracudas right now. But remember, as I said, as the day wanes on, 
if our lures can withstand the uh, punishment they're taking right now, hey, see if we can get some other nice, you know, more, uh, eh, I don't want to say desirable fish, but you know, have a little bit of some dinner we can bring home. Alright, so we're going to let this guy out. Yeah, about 100 feet. You see, this doesn't take long. Again, I know it might sound redundant, but it's not complicated fishing. You just pop your lure in, get up the speed, and go. Next thing you know, you're into the fight. Nice fish, nice fish, took a good old run. We're gonna kind of double back to him. See what we got. You on him, big guy? You feel him? Feel it. All right. There we go, he's fishing, he's doing his thing. I'm trying to get back to the sand right now is what I'm trying to do. All while keeping Abby tight on his fish. Don't want him to run into the rocks. Real, real big guy. He's starting to tension up again. Get that tension going on that fish. All right. Step back this way a little bit. Let's see what we got. Coming up to the boat. All right, bring your rock in back to me. Real. plug don't get no better than that solid 20 incher all right so we're gonna throw him on some ice make sure we can get him home that's dinner in the bucket right there we're gonna get right back to it all right folks and so that just shows you the power and the versatility of this little diving plug you know nice size keeper mutton snapper you know and don't ever think you can't catch mutton snapper you know trolling much less have wire leader on it so because that's what we got going on here i'm gonna probably re-rig this wires a little bit bent up and i don't want to lose my lure and well, we'll go with it from there like i said nice little mutton snapper we've re-rigged about ready to drop this lure back in the water see if we can get back on the bite got a nice little point i'm going over right here I don't want, it's kind of shallow, it's about eight feet. I don't want to risk getting the lure hooked up into it. So I'm gonna skirt my way around it and uh, just keep going back with what we're doing. All right, good to go. All right, we're up and trolling. Gonna pick up some speed. Good. Four. Five, maybe six knots, you know. Get going. See if we can find that bite. Alright, right there. Alright, there you go. Pull back. Reel on the way down. There you go. Alright, there you go. Nice fish, nice little zingarooski. Again, pen 12H. Shallow diving minnow six inch from Yozuri. we're on the hookup again with the big guy here we go nothing better than this yeah i saw him jump out there when he hooked up so we'll see what it is nice run too there he comes yep you see him out there flopping on top of the water like i said we're a little bit over the sand which is good we don't gotta worry about our fish going and heading into the rocks always ideal when you're you know doing shallow water fishing over the reef Get over that sand. They got nowhere to run. Okay, here it comes. You got him? Uh, okay. All right, I need you to back up a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Just yeah. get ready to back oh, up. Wait. Don't back up anymore. All right, back up some. Real. Pretty good there, dude. 
Well, all right, put your rod down in the rod holder. All right, there you go. Another, another nice barracuda. Back in the drink. All right, folks, so that was some good old fashioned fishing fun. Headed out this morning with the intentions of showing how to troll a diving minnow, shallow water diving minnow. That'll get you down to between, you know, three and five feet when trolling at pretty much any speed. They're not technically designed to go any deeper. Got into the hookup with a mess load of barracudas, had some fun pulling them in, caught a nice keeper mutton snapper. Definitely can't complain about this day of fishing. Ultra effective, ultra productive, and needless to say, super fun. Brought out the fish slayer, put them on some fish, got it done. So when it comes to lure selection, what I'm getting at is don't be shy to explore. Use something different that you're not necessarily always used to using. Shallow diving plug will definitely get you into the bite. You know, they're not the most resilient of lures. As you can see, we broke off the bill of one after it had been hit by several barracuda, but they do get you into the bite if you're looking for it. And if nothing else is getting tagged and hit, I say give it a shot if you've got it in your arsenal. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. Hope you had fun. Hope you enjoyed. Now, I hope you learned a little bit about how to troll with the diving minnow. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.